So we're going to, to move to another region of the world. So first, though, I'm Clément Renault. I'm working at the Swiss Institute of Technology in an institute for area and global studies. And uh, I've been living in China for years. And I'm currently doing research there about like, um, especially the, the, the southern region I'm going to talk about, that is Shenzhen. And um, the talk is called like the making of Shenzhen, which is basically, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure you, you've heard about the city, but I wanted to like give some context. And I think it's a very important place or, uh, today that is like defining many, many things in technology. And I'm, I'm, as I'm here in San Francisco, I wanted to talk about that. And um, yeah, I call it the transforming experience of technology on Earth because I think it's really something very important and I will explain why. So first thing is like Shenzhen is now, of course, for the being the world center of consumer electronics. So these are some pictures I, I took there. Um, there's basically this gigantic market in the, in the middle of the city where um, all the electronics are sell, like, so it's like a district with like many buildings, you know, like you can walk around and there's a lot of like, I mean, cable, hard disk, drones, whatever electronics uh, is sold there and exported around the planet. And uh, of course the main reason is because it's made there. So like even this computer I have like the, is made in, in, in this city. So I want to talk a bit about that and give some, you know, insight and context about why I think it's uh, interesting to be there and to understand what's happening. Um, well, the first thing to know about the city is like it's pretty new. So that's two pictures, uh, 1978, and today I must. I mean, it's a bit. This picture is a bit old, I guess. It's like maybe five years ago, but that's a city that totally like get off the ground in like um, a few years. So that's the main narrative that people know about the city. Uh, it was a fisherman village back then, like uh, at the end of the Cultural Revolution, uh, and um, yeah, and I know it's like. I think it's like 11 million people living there, and like it's a vibrant city, really big. Uh, it's one of the richest cities in China, and um, and that's where like many uh, famous companies are. Um, and this, yeah, and yeah. So one thing I wanted to start with that <laughs> because last month it was the 14th birthday of the city. So to give you a sense. So happy birthday, Shenzhen. That's the first thing I wanted to say. <laughs> and um, and yeah, uh, just a short video to, to show you uh, what the city looks like today, I guess. I don't know if I have some. Um, that was the, the small ceremony they put together for the 14th birthday. But really a few images to give you some context. So Shenzhen, right? That's the name of the city. So that's what it looks like today after being like uh, totally like small and, and unknown city for years. Um, and so, well, um, I, have to, I want to talk a bit about the region. <laughs> so the new name that the, the, the Chinese government as part of this big de uh, technological development is calling now the, this whole area the Greater Bay Area. So I think I, I needed to talk about that here, right? And uh, of course, there's a reference to the Bay Area here and to Greater China, because as you see, uh, this whole region is like, it's in Shenzhen is right by the border of Hong Kong and uh, this whole Delta. So it's called the Pearl River Delta, like the Pearl River is going down there and then Hong Kong has a, has a very specific uh, history, and it's a, it's a very specific region. So people tend to think about Shenzhen as um, only a city, but it's already, it's really like this ecosystem of uh, many different things. So for instance, you have like four legal system, Hong Kong, Macau, uh, mainland China, and Shenzhen. That is the, a special economic zone. So they have all their main features, like, I mean, fiscal, um, legal, and, um, all that thing. There's like, so in the Greater Bay Area plan of the Shenzhen, of the Chinese government, there's like, it's basically nine cities. I mean, you know, Macau, Zhuhai, Dongguan, Jiangmen, uh, Guangzhou, Dongguan, Shenzhen, Hong Kong, and, and uh, two other ones. And um, this ten city altogether is almost 100 million people living there today. So it's a huge region, like enormous, uh, with like lots of things, and it's really famous. The whole city we cannot see is Guangzhou. There is a very famous and old city in China, um, and this region was like um, basically the heart of the made in China. So like it's a really industrial region, uh, it's full of factories making all things possible and imaginable, and uh, and it's a. And yeah, it's like 40% of global like container traffic is there. It's coming from there. So like 40% of the world uh, traffic, and and um, people tend to think uh, like China is new, but there's actually a very long history of uh, global trade. Um, this is just some uh, um, 
yeah, drawings from the 19th century, but then um, you can think about the history of Hong Kong, right, as the as the really um, the trace of the British trade, colonial empire that's still there and made made what is today uh, this region, uh, at least in many regards, in terms of all the capital has been there and. Uh, and so there's a long history that is really a, a reflection of, uh, of yeah, what has shaped the world in the last 200 or 300 years and is unfolding, uh, continue to unfold today. And of course, um, one of the very important uh, thing that is um, during all the years, like I would say, uh, since the Second World War, you know, the Communist Party has been ruling China. And uh, one of the main things he has been investing is the infrastructure. And, um, with this idea, with this very uh, Marxist, I would say, and like very, yeah, very Marxist idea that infrastructure will produce superstructure that produce culture, I would say, if I sum it up really quickly. So the, the main idea was like this, the whole generation of uh, what is called the, the red engineers is, are the, the generation of Chinese uh, leadership uh, that have ruled China for like the past 40 years, and they were all engineers, basically. So they were focused on like building up uh, infrastructure for the country, like roads, um, especially like water systems, and of course cities that are emerging, uh, enormous cities all over China today. And so that's sort of the background that uh, uh, really huge focus on building up technology as well, of course, um, in this process. And, um, and Shenzhen in that regard has played a very important role. So this is a picture of Deng Xiaoping, which was the leader um, at the end of the Cultural Revolution, um, when Mao Zedong died, basically. And there's this big question of like, what, what are they going to do with the country? And of course, the country was like, uh, totally planned economy, very uh, communist style, like old school, um, with no, even no private property. And, um, and they decided to, to use Shenzhen as a buffer for like, Experimenting with like liberalization, uh, open market, opening markets, and uh, and so they all, they, all, they defined this zone around Hong Kong that was really like a capitalistic for centuries already, uh, with the biggest bank in Asia, and they, they 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 draw this zone at the border to make a buffer and make all the experiments they they could do with like markets, investment, so hosting foreign investments, and all that stuff. That's where uh, so it's called the Shenzhen Special Economic Zone. And that's an experiment that's been ongoing for since uh, yeah the 80s, I would say, so almost 40 years. And um, 30 years, sorry. And um, yeah, so that was really uh, and the main idea behind that was like do these experiments, uh, evaluate them, see what works, what are the danger, and then replicate the, replicate them all over the country. So Shenzhen is really the model city uh, of, of of China in many regards. So that's how it was conceived politically, and that's what it still is today. And um, yeah, and oh, this is not working. Oh, okay, oh, sorry, should work. Yeah, yeah, that's better. I wanted some like robots dancing. So, so, <laughs> so that's part of the. That, that actually, this show was part of a um, yearly TV show that is like an enormous uh, TV show for the Chinese New Year. And uh, last year, they had this gigantic ballet of robots dancing, which was like pretty amazing with like singer. I mean, yeah, whatever. I wanted to show that. And then, um, while well, the main city about, about, about Shenzhen, despite being this like uh, enormous economic and political experiment, is like, no, there's like hosting some like gigantic firms of, um, that are leading, um, I mean, on the global scale, that are leading in like sectors of economy, a very different sector. So, of course, Foxconn is, is the most famous, it's a Taiwanese company, but he has grown a lot of things in, in Shenzhen, including. Longhua plant, which is the most famous, 400 people making Apple and Samsung product, 400,000, yeah, I guess. Um, but also Tencent, who is in leading in like the biggest social networks in Asia, and also, I mean, biggest payment system in the world, my, my online payment system, and video game company in the world as well. Uh, Huawei is, a, is the biggest um, telecom equipment manufacturer in the world as well. Uh, BYD is uh, one of the biggest firm in uh, electric cars uh, in the world as well, doing mostly buses, trucks, uh, electric trucks. They are all over the world as well. Uh, DJI is the biggest drone company in the world. And DJI uh, is the biggest Beijing Genomic Institute. It's like DNA sequencing and genomics, and it's also the, big, the leading company in the world in that domain. 
and Ping An is the biggest insurance company uh, in Asia, first capitalization in Asia. So just to give you some context that this city, uh, despite, I mean, what it has become in these few years is also really leader on like many domains of technology that, I mean, I'm in Europe, they even not, they even not industrial sector yet, they even doesn't exist. So like drones and genomics and all that stuff. Um, and it's interesting to look a bit at the history. So at the end of the 90s, I mean, at the beginning of the 90s, there was this big rush in China. Of course, the, the market was opening, and people were like allowed to open companies. So the Chinese called it like Xiaohai, which means jumping in the sea, like, you know, like go. And many people went to Shenzhen to like make it, like really like a bit like I think California a few years ago. I mean, like go there and start companies and, and build up things. And that was the time that the two main uh, internet infrastructure in the world were, were on their way, were starting. So on one side, I think you're familiar with that, which is information highway. <laughs> it's a nice picture, uh, two different styles, as you can see. And, uh, and, um, and the other main enormous project of uh, internet infrastructure, that's a golden project from the Chinese government with uh, Jiang Zemin, uh, who was the president back there, and was an engineer in uh, telecommunication. Um, and so, so at the time, like the, this enormous infrastructure needed to be built and needed the companies that would actually manufacture all that stuff. And then, of course, China was like, and especially Shenzhen and all the region became the heart of like the core of like manufacturing this like so-called global village that was emerging. So this is a micro soldering chain. As you can see many all over the place, they're actually, yeah, soldering, uh, like PCBs and stuff. Um, and what was really interesting, I think, what people often don't really, one may, very, very interesting thing in Shenzhen is the people that built uh, this, this um, I mean, the people that built the internet were not only engineers. Uh, those are two pictures I took in, uh, in Huachang Bay, so in the, in the center of Shenzhen, where there are all these like electronics markets. And I wanted to show two things, basically. So those are like components, but you have two, very important thing here is like the tea, right? It's southern China, so people drink tea, and I mean, in this part of like this cushion uh, business, everything tea is core, and this, this is the culture there, and the family, of course, like the kids are playing around because all these businesses like of building phones, hard disks, SIM cards, cables are not made by like engineers very skilled, but by people that actually migrate there 10 or 20 years ago and figure out they should start a business, open a company, and they needed to, 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 to learn and to, you know, manufacture um, objects and components, like digital objects. So, like, um, it's mostly based on, on family networks, and I will explain a bit more about that. But, of course, when all those people arrived there, they, they, they had no knowledge, no prior knowledge, many uh, about technology. Many of them were farmers, basically. They were, like, coming from really far in the countryside and arriving in some place working in factories, and they had to learn. So a huge part of the Chinese learning, I would say, uh, at that point was like um, taking pieces of technology, opening them, understand how it works. And uh, I was recently in Shenzhen, it's a good story. I was recently in Shenzhen in one of the biggest uh, design houses there. There's like 3,000 designers. They make like thousands of products a year. And I was in the boss office talking to him, and he had this like car and giant on the floor, totally open. and. Um, yeah, he was explaining to me how he was, uh, the, the, to enter his company when uh, the new designer enter, was entering the company, they had to actually dismantle objects and explain how it works as a process for like, getting started in the company. And uh, lots, of, lots of learning happened like that because Shenzhen was a new city, there's no university there, no there's like one, uh, the Shenzhen University exists and there's a f lots of like, all over the world, like uh, universities that want to come there, but a few years ago they still like have nothing. So people had to learn with their own ways. So, you know, they did a lot of this, which led to a lot of like also learn how to reproduce things. Like how can you like um, make something similar? Of course, uh, which I mean, from this side of the world, is called the counterfeiting industry, but. It really is like, um, of course, like replicating something that is actually super complicated. I mean, if you try to do an iPhone, I would say if you succeed, you should be able to sell it <laughs> because it's like so complicated. So, 
So <laughs> that's my point of view. But like, uh, you, we can discuss that. Um, what I was saying is like, so and in China is like this it, this very concept that I mean in Europe maybe I, I guess it's the same here. We have the idea of like real product and fake product. Well, in China there's like a whole scope of description of the quality of the fake, and um, they have this ranking that is funny. I wrote it there. It's like, a whore is the so you have the very bad copy, and then a whore is sort of good. A a is like good. A a a is like very good. And so people are like, it's wu a whore, which is it's like five a. So you cannot make any difference. You can buy Ray-Ban glasses that are five a. Maybe it's even the same factory that does it. It's just so I mean, but all those fac the idea behind those factory was like. Um, it's all this like distributed network of people that are basically families. So like the cousin of this guy is doing, I would say, screens, and this guy is doing buttons, and this guy has batteries. So it's just coming together as a very organic uh, environment in all the Shenzhen and also all the Delta around, you know, and Dongguan, and all the factories. So they can assemble really quickly all sort of things. And, uh, and of course, we yeah, try all sort of things. And I mean, it comes, uh, yeah, it, and you know, like also invent actually lots of new things that are solving new problems. Uh, this is a fun for I bought like from 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 Accra in Ghana, you know, in West Africa. It's like it's a phone that has a very huge battery, like really enormous. You can actually char charge phones on that phone. <laughs> it's pretty funny. It's like a power bank phone. And then you know he has he has a, he has. If you look here, you see there's a USB port, so you can plug a USB on it on the phone to charge something. And it's, um, it's shipped with a lamp, USB lamp. Uh, uh, and the reason why is because in Accra and Ghana, there's a lot of power cuts. Uh, the electric system is not reliable. And so people uh, having this sort of fun, they can like uh, actually have a power source uh, everywhere with, with their phone. So like there's also like four SIM cards because um, in that region, they are like, people have different operators and it's cheaper when you call with the same. So like four SIM cards, uh, a big battery, all that stuff are like, really custom made for there. And I mean, it's not like it's a huge engineering process with like design thinking workshops. It's just like more a guy arriving there and being like, oh wait, we should assemble this like power bank with this phone, so we will be and put four SIM cards. So it's like calling his cousin in Guangdong and you know, fetching for the pieces, assembling them, and uh, basically shipping the phone straight from Shenzhen to Accra, putting them on the market, and you have a product ready, and then sell them. So like the product cycle is like totally different in whatever we can learn at like some design school or something. And also it's, it's, it's a way, I mean, it's like also, um, yeah, the industry that is addressing problems that nobody is really addressing because, I mean, Apple doesn't care about poor workers or Huawei neither. So, and it leads to like this famous thing that is Shenzhen, maybe we have heard of that. Um, all sorts of weird funds, like in, and weird objects that are basically Shanghai in Chinese means like low quality knockoff. Basically means made in China, but in, for the Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean that's pretty much true. And um, so we have started this collection. It's a, it's a project that I've been working on with uh, this innovation um, collective, art collective in Paris that is showing some pieces here. Um, we have been collecting all these weird funds. So like, there's a fund that is a, a, a riser. Or like some funds that have like um, with many different features that you can see Marlboro funds or like I mean we, we had like a hundred of them they're all different and they serve different purposes some have, are just like decorative things but also some are like there's a lot of funds in China for like elderly people because they need a like bigger you know like bigger keyboard um, um, more features like you know um, to call their daughter or their son like simpler simpler interaction and of course like big companies don't want to address this like small niche markets, so like there's this manufacturer that's just see the market, uh, assemble the, the thing and like ship it, which is like, I mean, interesting in terms of how it works as a, as a distributed network of manufacturer that has really no design house, and like you cannot know, there's no signature, there's no brand most of the time. Um, and yeah, of course, all this capacity of like assembling things are like, um, a major advantage in terms of like um, following the pace of like how technology is evolving. So if you look at like Bitcoin uh, or like blockchain in general, like all the mining of course have been assembled around there because all the infrastructure to make computer is there. So as soon as you have the CPU, you have the chip, then you know, you just add fans and like more poor food, more poor, poor like uh, supply and all that stuff. So this is a Bitcoin mine in China, but I, I mean, it's just an illustration. Um, 
really like uh, the, the pace of this city is like so fast. It's like um, basically a product there, like for major design houses, a, a designer in a year, it goes around like 60 to 80 products a year. Uh, because it's just like, you know, they, they know all the, the, the suppliers and so they just go pick, assemble, and ship it. And so the pace is like incredibly fast. So of course, like it provides a fast answer for like, yeah, there's a need for mining, then, you know, it's delivered like a month later or something. Um, and of course, like more and more people are going there. And especially from all over the world. This is a map that is published by uh, Seed Studio, which is a major, a big uh, open source hardware manufacturer from, from Shenzhen. Um, and so it's like a tourist map. So like people are like getting like going there, uh, getting tours. Like I saw, you know, I mean, um, all like most of the hardware Kickstarter campaign has run there. You know, like run from from incubators in Shenzhen because they have. Um, you have all the. If you're in Hong Kong, you can register companies. Then all the uh, regulation, border regulation, export infrastructure, um, by of course manufacturing, and access to markets that is, are very hard to access from here, including China, but also all the export market, uh, the rest of the world. That is like, um, yeah, Middle East, Africa, Southern America, etc. Um, so it becomes a major destination for people to go there and learn how make technology. Uh, and of course, the government in that is taking that very seriously. And there's a big plan that you may have heard that is called Made in China 2025. That is the major uh, plan for China modernization, industrial reform and modernization. And, um, and in, this, in this plan, the maker, or the figure of the maker, uh, in Chinese called Chuang Kua. They, they, they created that word from that. Chuang is like creativity, and Ku is like a person. So it's like the creative person has become the core of the, the Chinese policies uh, for many years um, now. It's like 20, it started in 2015. This is a TV show. It's basically a Kickstarter TV show when they, re I mean, but just, but like there's, a, there's major plans in like taking the city of Shenzhen and create a model from it. And it was already, the model of Shenzhen was already exported all over China, but now it's like exported. I mean, there's a lot of countries that want to replicate that model. And China has also an enormous project of like infrastructure all over. You may have heard of that as well. Digital Silk Road, uh, One Belt, One Road, all that project of like infrastructure over the world. So, of course, China is, and Shenzhen in particular is already uh, exporting uh, lots of this technology uh, all over the planet. And it's shaping the new spaces. Um, in, in many, many different uh, countries around the world that is going the same path as like going from like developing countries, I would say, what people call it. So, yeah, um, I think I'll stop here. Thanks for attention and thanks for having me here. <laughs>